everyone, welcome to Let's Go Live. It's episode 33. I'm Maddie. Hello all, I'm Greg and all together we, we are live. live. You can find us here live in our spare room weekday mornings at 11am. For a show that is packed with facts and fun and awkward selfies and <laughs> quiz dances uh, and a bunch of activities for you to try after the show. Thank you so much if you're with us live right now. But if you are catching up later, hello to all of you two. Who is with us in the live chat today? Oh, let's have a look who's with us. Uh, we have Harriet in Felix Kirk. Uh, we have Emma and Kate in <laughs> South Africa. Hello. Hi. Um, Ethan and Ryan from RAF Digby. Hey. Uh, we've got Lotta in Cornwall. Ben in Nottingham. Hi, Ben. Woody from Kidderminster. Uh, Liam in London. Hello, Liam. How are uh, you? Jamelia in Lincolnshire. Uh, we have Addie in Cambridgeshire. Uh, and we have a Toby from the New Forest. Oh, and one more. We have a Gus in Yorkshire as well. Oh, just sneaked in there. We've got so many people. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Um, we have had a fantastic week. A fantastic exploring week. Exploring the oceans. Um, it looks like you lot have as well. You <laughs> sent so many pictures through to our email address. Yes, Thank you, you did. Thank you so much. Um, actually, let's look at some of these, uh, some of your crafts and creative ventures right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is Willow. Uh, Willow, she made her own Lift the Flag book and it's all about keeping the oceans clean. Uh, next up we have Sophie and Freya who enjoyed trying out the underwater sound experiment and also experimented with those two teaspoons to make the noise. Love that you got involved. William and Amelia decided to take their grabbers onto the beach to clean up some rubbish and stop it going into the sea but they were shocked at how much rubbish people left on the beach and they filled the bag in around 20 minutes. Wow. Scary right? Harry set up an entire ocean in his paddling pool and by the looks of it, he's got a growing population of sea urchins. Yeah, you need to get some otters in, Harry, mm, I think. You do. Um, Max had great fun making and playing his own game of straws and reusables, nice. aka snakes and ladders. <laughs> um, and he even had more, he had more fun beating mum and dad. Yeah. Last photo for now then, uh, Charlie and Wilf. They made a shark mask each and then they put them together to make a two-headed shark. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so we've now got a little video for you. This is Arthur and Annabelle. They also had a go at our hydrophone experiment. They tried loads of different sounds, but Arthur had the awesome idea to get his games console, the, the games control, <laughs> which vibrates and they thought it might sound a little bit like a boat engine. So here they are. Oh, clever. Mm. Hours nice. of fun listening nice. to things underwater, hey? Um, and this week has been loads of fun for us too. We started our ocean adventure at the beach. We were looking at tides and also exploring rock pools. Yes, and then we ventured a little way out. We dived into the shallow seas. Uh, next to the coasts, we explored coral reefs and kelp forests. Mm -hmm. And then we headed out even further to the open ocean and we met some of the animals that live there with the blowfish. Yeah, and we haven't yet dived down though. No, we but haven't. don't worry, don't fret. <laughs> Turn that frown upside down <laughs> because we are going to dive down into the deep today. We are going to be deep ocean explorers. We are going to be bathinauts. A what? I hear you say. I might have heard the term astronaut, but what is a bathonaut? Okay, right. so let's think about astronaut, right? The astro bit of astronaut comes from the Greek astron for star, and the nought from the, comes from the Greek nautus, which is uh, means sailor or voyager. So mm -hmm. an astronaut voyages through the stars. The bathy in bathinaut uh, comes from the Greek bathis, meaning deep. So bathinaut is someone who voyages through the deep. We are going to be bathing all yes, today, are. all of us. Let's do this. How are we going to get there, though? How are we going to dive down into the deep? What is our vehicle going to be? Well, we are going to use a submersible that looks a little bit like this. Uh, you might have seen our Lego models dotted around, but this is our little submersible here, and you can see it has a Perspex sphere, and that's the important thing in this submersible, and isn't it? And that is launched from a vessel that looks like... <laughs> Now, Maddie made this at the weekend, <laughs> didn't you? I did. Oh, it was such a chore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm even going to hook up our submersible to uh, our little hook there, because that is how the submersible will, first of all, get into the water, isn't it? Now, this looks actually a lot mm -hmm. like the sub and the vessel that you do launch, you do use to launch into the deep. And Greg would know, didn't you? Yes, so uh, <laughs> I've, I actually have had the amazing yeah. experience, privileged experience, to go and dive 
in a sub. Um, here is me in a sub <laughs> down in the ocean. Yeah, it, it was it was absolutely incredible. And you can see that is a lot like that sub there, that Lego yeah. sub. Yeah. Uh, and it was launched from, uh, you can see the vessel in the background here. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent a month living on that ship with a team that was diving on sites around the island of Bermuda mm -hmm. uh, in the North Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to start our dive today in a submersible just like that one, a submersible with a perspex sphere. Um, but let's join Greg now and see how we get from on the ship into the water. All right, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm excited, let's get down there. Hello sir, can I come in? Oh, it is a bit small, isn't it? All right, see you topside. Yeah, I think we're uh, ready to slide you into position. Okay. Oh, we're flying. Yeah, let's turn this on. Go on that side of it. We're in. I guess we're ready to go then. Yeah, good, thank you. Oh, it's so good to be in here. I've been waiting for this for such a long time. Fantastic. Super cool. <laughs> it's so great reliving that. I'm yeah. so excited about oh, this episode. Oh, but it's awesome. Oh. It's really exciting. So once you're in the water, you're splashed, splashed off the back of the vessel. <laughs> um, you have to wait for permission to dive. So we thought well, we thought about um, why things float or sink during Mini Makers Week. Mm. And you might remember that it's all about density. You float if you are less dense than the liquid that you are in. And you sink if you are more dense than the liquid you're in. So at the moment, that submersible is floating on the top of the water. We're floating because we are less dense. Now, mm. have a look. You see those two big gold tanks on either side of the submersible? Yeah. They're currently filled with air, mm -hmm. right? But we need to increase our weight, increase our density. So what we mm. actually do is we open a vent and we replace the air with water. Ah. The air comes out, the water goes in, we get heavier, our density increases and we start to sink. Clever. All right, then. So let's do that. Here it comes. Roger that. Opening vents now. Okay, so tell me what happens as we open the vent. So you can see the air starting to come out there. Yep. Right. And it's going to tip forward. Whoa. And then it's going to roll back in a minute. So that's our start. That's quite a scary feeling, actually, <laughs> isn't it? Yep. So we are now under the water. Oh, our journey to the... Deep. Will it go? How deep is the ocean? Yeah, well, this is really interesting because we actually split the ocean up into layers depending on how dark they are. So we've got some diagrams here to help us explain all of this. Now, the top layer that we've been we've spent most of this week in is called the sunlight zone. And this goes down to about 200 metres. And if you look, if you sorry, if you took the famous Big Ben clock tower in London, this is as deep as two Big Bens on top of each other. Then once you cross through the sunlight zone, it gets a bit darker and you move into bum 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 the twilight zone. Do, 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 do. <laughs> How deep is the twilight zone? It's about the height of three Eiffel Towers from the top of the surface to the bottom of the twilight zone. Wow, that is a long way down, but you haven't seen anything yet because deeper than 1,000 metres, you cross into the midnight zone. And here it is pitch black. And that will go all the way down to the sea floor, which is at different depths in different places around the world. The average depth for the ocean is about four kilometres, about three and a half, four kilometres down. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of places do go deeper than that. Now, all of those places are still the midnight zone because it's pitch black. Yeah. Uh, but we sometimes call, uh, we give different names to the different layers, these, yes. these imaginary layers of the ocean. So yeah. I'm going to show you uh, this one. Here you go. So from about uh, four kilometres down to about six kilometres down, we call it the abyssal zone. Ooh, nice. Uh, still the midnight zone, remember. Um, but that's not it. In some places on the planet, there are deep troughs and trenches in the seafloor that disappear even deeper. And these uh, trenches are sometimes called the Hadal zone, which is named after the realm of Hades, the underworld in Greek mythology. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, right? And it's time for today's 
first fact bomb, right? <laughs> um, yeah. If what's the highest point on the whole of the planet? Uh, the top of the highest mountain, Mount Everest. Yes, the top of the highest mountain, Mount Everest. Now, the highest mountain, Mount Everest, is eight eight four eight meters, mm -hmm. right? Just shy of nine kilometers. And if we took Mount Everest and we put it down at the bottom of the deepest trench that we know of on the planet, yes. Check this out. It oh. wouldn't even reach the surface. That's incredible. It wouldn't even reach up to the twilight zone and the sunlight zone. So the deepest part of the ocean is deeper than Mount Everest is high. Yes. Wow. That, that deepest part of the ocean uh, is... <laughs> Ain't no trench low enough. <laughs> Ain't no... Sorry. <laughs> ah, the deepest part of the ocean uh, is the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we call it the Cha Challenger Deep is where mm. it's called. And it's just shy of 11 kilometres deep. Yeah. Amazing. But... Hang on. Oh. oh. Every time. Every time. It's because it's because I turned the volume down on the previous sound effect. I think it's funnier that the fact that every time you go to do a fact bomb, it never works first time. Anyway, that was for the Everest fact. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank so you. here's the thing with Challenger Deep. Only seven people have ever been there. Uh, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh in 1960. And then in 2012, film director, uh, he made a film called Avatar. Uh, James Cameron, he travelled down there solo. Mm. And then last year, four more people voyaged to Challenger Deep. Mm. But this is really cool. More people have walked on the moon than have travelled to Challenger Deep. Yes! <laughs> you get a fact bomb for that, Maddie Mo. Yeah, you do. Thanks. Um, so to discover what life might be like down in the depths of the ocean, uh, we've made a model. Mm, Can we, we see have, your yeah, ocean we... model? Hang on, let me just get all my bits Now, together. this isn't to scale, right? We no. haven't done those layers to scale. Uh, you got the graphic for that. This, we just want to kind of show you. Can everyone see that? Yeah, they yeah, can. That's perfect. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, nice. So we've got our different layers of the ocean here, but we should say, actually, that these layers aren't fixed. It's not like when you're going down to the deep, you, you pass imaginary dotted lines or anything. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, past it. <laughs> but also, these, these layers can change slightly because, as we said, they're all to do with how much light mm. is around in that layer. So at night time... The sunlight zone kind of becomes the twilight, the twilight zone. zone. Yeah, the twilight zone moves up. And yeah. also the midnight zone moves up as well so when it gets pitch black. Exactly. So, you know, think of these layers as changeable. They're not fixed in place. So um, we want yeah. to add some life to our model as we, we go deeper and deeper on today's uh, ocean adventure to the deep. Yeah. So um, on, let's start with the sunlight zone. Sure. So I'm lots and lots of sunlight. A little sunlight zone. There. There we go. So on Tuesday, we visited the uh, mm -hmm. shallow shelf seas. Hard to Ooh, say. Very difficult Try to say that one. a few times. Shallow, shallow shelf seas. seas. Very good. Uh, and that was close to the land. It was nice and warm. We went to the warm coral reefs yeah. full of loads of fish. Then we went and explored the kind of fish. Fish. Nice. Oh, Nemo clownfish. So we'll pop that in. Then we went to the colder water of the kelp forest and met the sea urchins and the otters. Otters. Very cute. Otter that. Thanks. I love that. All Maddie's own artwork. Uh, <laughs> love that. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we went out into the open ocean uh, and we would we stayed in that kind of top layer. We found that it was home to lots of phytoplankton, lots of algae. Don't don't quote me on those pictures, but you get the idea. It's yeah, plankton. They're, they're really small. There we go. Uh, and the zooplankton that ate them as well. All right, then. So we've got the sunlight zone well and truly covered, but we want to go a little bit deeper today, don't we? We yes. want to go into the... Do, 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 do. Twilight Zone. So to do this, uh, let's dive deeper. I'm going to show you some footage from my dive into the deep. Yeah. Are you ready? that has changed in that little bit of dive there? What, what, what changed? It got darker. darker. Absolutely, yes. yes. It gets dark because water mm -hmm. scatters the sunlight. 
right? Yeah. So the further down you go, more light has been scattered above and around you. So there's yeah. less light where you get to. Mm -hmm. So as you go deeper and deeper, it gets darker and darker. So to help explain this on our model, I've actually got my torch on my phone and I'm going to place it in a hole that I've just, uh, I've just made in the top of this model box. And now you can see that the light is well and truly hitting the sunlight zone. And then I've got some tracing paper here. And some of that light is making it through into the twilight zone. So it's not pitch black yet. We've got a bit of light going through, haven't we? I just darkened the screen a little bit just to help. Oh, OK, <laughs> cool. There you go. Um, so I... But you did get to the twilight zone, didn't you? Just. 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 I went to 250 metres depth. Yeah. So it was, okay. I, I went just into the twilight zone. Mm -hmm. um, and there is still sunlight in the yeah. twilight zone. So you can see there's a little bit. So here, um, you've still got uh, lots of algae that's there to be eaten up. Hmm. However, most of the animals in the twilight zone are eating something else. It's called marine snow. Here is some marine snow that we saw out the front of the sub. Mm. Look at it. It looks beautiful. It you're does. diving down. This is reflecting on the light from your headlights. And you're looking at it like, oh, what is that? That's Ooh. wonderful. I love that. Ooh. But Maddie, what actually is marine snow? It's snowing, but we're underwater. Well, marine snow is actually... It's kind of dead stuff, isn't it? It's dead it's, stuff. It's dead algae. It's dead little creatures that yeah. have you know, passed away in those top layers. Yeah. And also, it's poo. <laughs> It, it's it's fish poo. It's fish poo. Yeah. yeah. So that's what a lot of that life is eating. It's eating the dead stuff and fish poo. But it's packed full of energy. Mm -hmm. And that's what it needs. In fact, yeah. lots of the life as you go further, further down, eat that marine snow that's at the bottom of that food chain. All right. So let's find out what you saw at 250 metres just within the twilight zone. Here is a picture that we saw at the front of the sub. Wow, amazing. Where yeah. are you? This is actually the wall of an underwater mountain. Uh -huh. uh, we did see some moray eels. We saw nice. a lot of lionfish. Yes. Uh, and apparently there was a shark as did, well. Did... I didn't see the shark, sadly. As if you missed it. Pilot Kelvin heard on the radio there's a shark on the head, but we didn't see the shark. All right, then. So in which case, I'm going to add a moray eel into the twilight zone. Top of the twilight zone, yep. And I'm also adding a shark as well. There we go. You can go in there, buddy. Nice. Nice. All right then. Um, to now... find out okay. what actually lives in the twilight zone, mm. I think we should give a call to a good friend of ours. Yeah. Someone who has actually dived into the twilight zone uh -huh. and deeper. Okay. I'm going to get right. that set up for you. Now, so we are going to speak to Dr. John Copley from the University of Southampton. He's a marine biologist, a bathonaut, and he was even a contributor on Blue Planet 2. So we are very lucky to have him not only as a friend, but also here to speak with us today. Is he there? Yeah! John's there! Hello, John! <laughs> Hello, Maddie and Greg. Great to join you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your, having you on the show so much. It's really special. So, John, here's the deal. I got to dive to 250 metres mm -hmm. uh, in my little Perspex bubble sub. Yeah. The sub that you dived in to get further down looked a bit different. Why? It's all because of pressure. So if you've ever been in a swimming pool and held your breath and got down to the bottom of the swimming pool, um, you can often feel a squeeze in your ears. And yeah. that's pressure. Uh, and that's because of the weight of all the water that's now above you pushing down and pushing in on your ears. So when we dive really deep, the deeper we go, the more pressure there is because there's more water pushing down above us. So we need a different type of sub uh, oh. to go really deep. So okay. um, I've got a good way to show you the pressure, actually. This is a polystyrene cup. Mm -hmm. right up here above sea level and if this was taken to 4,000 meters it would shrink and look like this. Oh, so that is the pressure that has just made it go like that. How cool is that? Amazing. So John how did you cope with the pressure then when you dove, dove deeper, dived <laughs> deeper? <laughs> So obviously we don't want to get squashed like Greg's cup there. Uh, so we're inside a submarine that's got very strong walls that withstand all that pressure and we stay at normal conditions. So we don't have to get uh, cope with getting getting squeezed. I'm right, going to put then. up a little video of your sub, John. Tell us about it. So your sub, Greg, was made out of acrylic, which is great and it's nice and see-through. To go really deep, we need to make the subs out of something stronger. So the one I dived in um, was made out of titanium alloy, which is a very strong metal. 
Uh, and it only had three very tiny windows in that to look out of. And although it looks about the size of a, of a minibus, the bit that carries the people is, is a hollow ball just two metres across. And there's three of us squeezed in there for about eight to 12 hours. Uh, and titanium is great because it's stronger than steel, uh, but it's also very light because the sub's got to be lowered off the ship on a crane and then lifted back onto the ship by a crane afterwards. Mm -hmm. So we can actually see uh, at the end of that video, someone just looking through a tiny, yes. tiny window. Yeah, got... Wait, did you all have to take it in turns? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are three windows, so there's one for each person inside. But oh, that's yeah, great. <laughs> Handy. They thought about that one. Yeah, they did. Um, all right, so so we're on this ocean adventure, you lot watching. We're diving down mm -hmm. into the deep. We did the first bit, and we were in this sub, right? We were in a Perspex sub. So we're going to switch up now and go to this sub, something that's more like John's sub. Yeah. Like John's sub. It was called the Shinkai 6500. So. And it's made of that titanium alloy. Yes. So that's the difference here. It's much, much stronger material. Um, but John, we want to know about the biology, about the animals that you have seen in your dives to the deep. So we want to know what kind of things did you see in the twilight zone and also further down as well. And we thought it would be fun for you to be our quiz master and for us to do this as a quiz, John, which means... The music's going. It's time for some quiz music. Which means we need the dance. Oh, it's doing the turtle. I'm doing the dive. I'm not, I'm not gonna swim, I'm gonna go in a sub. Amazing. Look at that, Dr. John Copley doing a quiz dance on Let's Go Live. Who'd have, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? <laughs> All right So then. let's all dive deeper and let's meet the creatures down there. This is how the quiz is going to go. You lot, this is how the quiz works. We're going to bring up two pictures, mm -hmm. all right? Two different deep sea animals are going to come up on the screen. And then John is going to give us a clue or a series of clues about one of those animals. And you need to work out which one it is. Okay. Maybe go to the screen and point at the one. Yeah. Maybe yell it out, write it in the live chat if you're watching live. All right then. Um, so we're going to start things off in the twilight zone. <laughs> which of these animals is John describing? Okay. Do you think it is either the deep seacomb jelly? That's this one. That's ours, yeah. Or the anglerfish. John's got the anglerfish. All right, John, give us the clues. Okay. So the animal I'm after, it lives in the twilight zone. It can sometimes make its own light to attract its prey but it catches its food with two very long tentacles trailing out from its body. Mm. I think lots of people were like, it's the anglerfish when he talked about the light. But Clever. I, think... I see what you did with the clues there. You were leading us astray, but I think that last clue made it very clear. It is, in fact, the deep sea comb jelly. We got um, a video of this, actually. We do have a video of the deep sea comb jelly. John, tell us about it. So it looks a bit like a jellyfish, but it's a different kind of animal called a comb jelly. And this one, it can pull those two tentacles back into pockets on its body. And the bits hanging down from the tentacles are sticky. Uh, so they trap marine snow and small animals for it to eat. And, and it's red because down in the deep ocean, most animals hunt with blue light. And if you shine a blue light on something red, it appears black. So it disappears into the background. Oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. We do need to take a moment to talk about the anglerfish um, yeah. because we got to go on this amazing uh, behind the scenes trip at the Natural History Museum. It was amazing. Um, and we got to actually hold some of the specimens. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one that I got to hold was an anglerfish. Yes. We Look should say that. that is um well past its sell by date. That is a pickled anglerfish, so not a, not a not an alive one. But yes. um, I am actually going to add an anglerfish now to our model box in the twilight zone. Nice. There okay. it is. So your two options for the second deep sea animal are these two. I've got all sorts of pictures and videos. <laughs> Hang on. All right, we've so got this one. So first up, we have the giant isopod, or. <laughs> We have a sea spider. Hmm. John, give us your clues. So this animal is like something we see at home, but it's much bigger in the deep sea. And if you stretch its legs out, they could be 40 centimetres across. There's actually a species of one of these named after me that lives on undersea mountains in the Indian Ocean. Uh, and they're great dads. The dad looks after the babies that hang on to his legs until they've grown up enough to crawl away and live on their own. And they usually have eight long legs for walking. Okay, the legs gave it away. Yeah. It is the sea spider. It is what, the sea spider. What, what is the one that's named after you? It's called Pycnogonum copleyi. Copleyi. Oh, after ah. John Copley. That's so cool. <laughs> that's amazing. Here it is. Sorry to anyone who uh, gets a bit queasy with spiders. Spiders yeah. are awesome, though. 
this is a giant one that lives in the sea. That's amazing. Awesome. Now, John, we're actually going to go down to the midnight zone now. So I'm going to put that on our box. Let's talk about some of the animals there. Um, we've got two options for everybody. We have the lizard fish or the barrel eye. So the lizard fish is on our side of the screen. The barrel eye is on John's side of the screen. Which one is it? Well done to all of you lot in the live chat. Sea spider, sea spider, says Sophie and Julie in Hertfordshire. Loads of people yelling it out there. All right, John. Give, give us, us a clue. Please. Okay, for this one, it's a top predator of the deep. And it's got two eyes that look upwards, looking out for flashes of light made by its prey. And the one that I'm after spends most of its time resting on the seabed instead of swimming about through the ocean all the time. Uh, and it waits for its prey to swim above it, and then it swims up to pounce. See, this is a trickier one. It is interesting because both of these fish have features that allow them to see above them, which yeah. is a huge benefit if you are living in the deep sea. But However... This is, this is the lizard fish because actually the lizard fish, as you said, John, normally found on the bottom. Here it is, sat on the bottom of the sea, sea floor. floor. All right, John, let's give... So, uh, I'm going to add this to our box, the nice. lizard fish. Let's go for number four. Our options for number four are, I believe, either a vent shrimp okay. or a deep sea bamboo coral. Ooh, what are our clues? So the one I'm after here, it lives on the bottom at the deep sea floor uh, and it lives at the sides of a hot spring on the ocean floor. And it catches its food in a very weird way. So its food actually lives on it and it eats off its own body. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. I don't think that's the coral. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the, it's, the sh it's the shrimp. The shrimp would be able to do that, right? Is it the shrimp? It is the shrimp, yes. And, and these, these shrimp, they're the animals from the deepest that I've been so far in the ocean, so five kilometres down. And they live around this hot spring on the ocean floor called a hydrothermal vent, and they grow bacteria on their bodies, and they scrape those bacteria off to eat them. So it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like if we were gardening potatoes in our armpits. <laughs> and that bacteria is doing some really neat chemistry around that uh, deep sea vent, actually, oh in order to create, create sugars that are then eaten by the, by the, uh, the shrimp. That's amazing, I'm John. just hopping back. This is my the, the barrel, oh, barrel, barrel eye. eye fish. That's going into the uh, midnight zone as well. There it is. Right, Lovely. John, we are going to do one more. Okay. And for this one, we're going to go dive. We're going to dive deeper than even John has dived, right? Deeper than five kilometers. We're looking to go right down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Now to do this, we were currently on our deep sea adventure in this sub. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're now going to switch to this sub, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this looks a lot like the one that James Cameron used to dive down to the bottom of the Mariana oh, Trench. Oh, nice. All right uh, then. So that's the one we're in right now, John. And our options are a blobfish, Lots of people's favourite sea animal, that, yesterday, when we asked you in the live chat. Cute or ugly? That's the question. Uh, or this, the giant amphipod. Over okay. to you, John. Okay, so the animal I'm after here, it eats anything it can find on the seabed. So that could be dead fish or even marine snow that sinks down from above. It lives right at the bottom of the deepest trenches, more than 10 kilometres down, and its body is covered in a spiky armour. Oh, okay. Oh. So if it's the armour, it's not the blobfish, is no. it? It is the giant amphipod. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's the giant amphipod. That so these weird. are they're crustacean uh, animals, a bit like shrimp. Uh, now, most of the amphipods that live in the shallows, they're about the size of a grain of rice or so. But the ones at the bottom of the deep trenches, they get much bigger. They can be almost as big as a banana. Wow. wow, that's like seeing a banana-sized woodlouse or something. Exactly I'm trying that. to think of like yeah. an equivalent. Yeah. Weird. Uh, because, they, because they eat anything that sinks down into the trenches from above, uh, unfortunately that means that they, they eat tiny pieces of plastic now that we know are getting all the way to the bottom of the deep trenches. So even though they live way down at the deepest place in the ocean, they still need us to be ocean helpers. Ocean helpers. Oh, I was sorry. I was too distracted. That's yeah. so sad that our plastic is even making it further than than well, he, most humans can travel. It's That's beating scary. us down there. Yeah. John, thank you so so much for introducing us to some of the weird and wonderful life thank of the you. deep ocean. Uh, to have someone that 
actually been there yeah. uh, down to five kilometers deep into the midnight zone mm -hmm. is amazing for Let's Go Live. Um, so thank you, John. We'll say goodbye. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you. Keep going on amazing adventures. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, what a cool scientist. That was very cool. And oh. actually, my uh, our model is just about finished now. I've sort of like <laughs> fairly messily added all of the fish to it. But you can see that our light sort of like stops getting past uh, the twilight zone. And down in the midnight zone, we've got a couple of extra animals I've put in there. I love that. I know. That is so, so Isn't cool. It? It's a really fun make. And we've left um, a link in the description box below if you want to have a go at doing it yourself. Now, before we go, uh, yeah. we've got one more make that we, we want to show you yes. um, that you might want to try at home. Maybe you've got some favourite animals that we've already mentioned. Maybe you've got some other ideas. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get set up to show you this last quick make then we're going to see a bunch more of your photos uh, and a video yeah uh, before we say goodbye so we've obviously enjoyed exploring the deep today but you can do it at home with just a plastic wallet and some black paper and pens hmm. so if i show you this right now if you want to switch to the camera yes um, top shot here it comes i have drawn some deep sea creatures onto a plastic wallet but i've placed black paper under them so we can't see them very well exactly the same as if we were exploring the deep sea but now I've um, but then I've also cut out um, our own submersible with a searchlight. But now what happens if I put that searchlight underneath the plastic wallet? Suddenly, oh, cool. we can see the animals down there. So here we've got a blobfish. That up there is a is a is actually a vampire squid. Oh nice. And come round, we've got an eel, we've got our barrel fish up there, anglerfish. This is a siphonophore for anybody who knows the octonauts. So how, how do you make that? Because that's super cool. So this anyone cool. watching could do their own drawings and then yeah. go on their own deep sea adventure. That's the giant squid just there. All right then, so let me just quickly really simply show you. Um, I have got a plastic wallet and inside it I've got a piece of white paper and a piece of black paper on the back. So if I just draw a little sea creature here, uh, this is going to be our... There we are. This is going to be a vampire squid, which you can look up. We don't have a picture of this, but they are really cool. There you go. Vampire squid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now if I take the piece of white paper away, you can't see it as well because it's got the black under. But then if you move your white piece, you can see it again. So just imagine that that white piece of paper is the torchlight that you've created for something like a submersible. So that's it. Love it. Yeah. Really simple, but really lovely. So yeah. you can draw your own deep sea adventure and yes. go on one. Yes, oh, absolutely. That is it for our dive to the deep. Mm -hmm. I was really looking forward to this episode and it's been so amazing. It has been <laughs> so, so good. And also you have all been brilliant this week. You've really you know, yeah. thrown yourself into the theme and we have loved seeing all of your makes, your ocean helper posters and all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's just see a couple more uh, of your pictures now. Okay, here uh, they come. This is Lottie. Uh, she upcycled her favourite T-shirt. It doesn't fit her anymore, so she turned it into a bag. Nice. This is Hester. Um, Hester didn't have a box, so made an ocean diorama in her living room. She used blankets to make a rock pool, plants to make a kelp forest, and there's even some plastic poo <laughs> for the remoras to eat as well. <laughs> Harleen created this coral diorama. Uh, she even coloured in a fish diagram and has a map of all the all the world's oceans. Wow, very cool. This is Zoe. Channeled her inner sea otter by making an anemone out of jelly and curly whirlies. Oh, oh hello, tasty jelly. Nice. That's amazing. Uh, Danielle and Zane, uh, they made an orca whale model out of a recycled bottle. And uh, so Danielle made that and then Zane designed a plastic catcher to glide along the bottom of the sea to collect plastic and help marine wildlife. Very, very cool. Very lovely. Very, very cool. Um, um, should we show one last thing? Yeah. So we've actually had a poem sent in from Emma. Um, and Emma has written this poem to raise awareness of plastic pollution and its effect on her favourite animals, whales. Uh, and we have got it here. So this is Emma with her poem, Dave the Whale. Out in the sea, there's a whale called Dave. If we change our ways, his life we could save. He likes to eat crow, which he thinks is fantastic. But to save his life, we need to reuse our plastic. He opens his mouth and swallows his dinner. But he eats our waste, and this makes him thinner. The plastic inside doesn't melt away, or give him the nutrients he needs to play. So here's some advice from my home school. Please take home your bottle and don't be a fool. 
If we all try much harder to keep our sea clean, Dave won't think us humans are mean. And out in the future, one day far away, his children might thank us and we can watch them play. Thank you so much, Emma. We thought that was lovely and such a nice way to round up the week. But of course, we can't leave you without doing the selfie. So are we all ready for a bit of for a good dose of awkwardness? Okay, awkward selfie, the final one of Ocean's Week. All right, then. I'm going to. Okay, I'll Okay. I'll do this. I'll do. Okay, I think we're good. That's fun. Yeah. Okay, you you ready? Go. It's the awkward selfie. DC edition. <laughs> All right, we're good. <laughs> Hopefully awesome. some of you caught that. And um, as you know, on Fridays, we do like to say thank you to everybody who has helped us during the week. So first of all, uh, thank you to all of our guests, the Blowfish, Catherine Gemmel, we had Anjani Ganes, and today, of course, Dr. John Copley from the University of Southampton. A uh, bunch of people who have uh, helped us with ideas, uh, Craig Kendall and Avery, Heather Jackson, Katie Bellman, Hannah Ayub, and John again has helped all the yeah. way through the week. Uh, thanks, thanks, John, for the advice. And of course, thank you to our patrons uh, who support the show over on our Patreon. Uh, your generosity means that we're able to uh, bring on a small team to help us create this show, and we are ever grateful for your support. Thank you. The madness that is this show. <laughs> yeah. uh, this week, that's been Rob uh, on design work, Kaylee with ideas and words, and Kaliani for loads of production support. Thank you, team. And of course, thank you to you watching without you this show doesn't happen um so thank you for sticking with us we really 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 enjoy doing it um yesterday we did announce next week's theme which is the science of magic i always feel like i need to do a hand flash magic uh, so join us on monday at 11 a.m for that right let's do goodbye to a few people who are in the live chat who do we have? We have got... We've got Willow in North Shields. Nice, we have... Oh, goodness me, we've got Herbie in Elstree. We've got Bella in Lewis. Annie in Huddersfield. Uh, her, oh, you've done that. Georgia and Ayla in Birmingham. We have Hetty and Cora in Suffolk. Hello. Musa and Hanifa in Cambridge. And Bella in Lewis, did we manage that one? I think we did. Charlie Izzy and Maggie Flynn in Wales. In Buckingham. <laughs> we've got so many. Thank you so, so much for watching. <laughs> As always, subscribe if you haven't already and stay curious. We will see you next week for the start of Magic Week on Let's Go Live. Bye. <laughs> Bye.